This is a thoracic vertebra. In fact, it is a typical thoracic vertebra, typical thoracic vertebra. And uh, like other vertebrae in the body, each vertebra, it has a body, and it has a neural arch, and it has processes. So uh, this is the body of the thoracic vertebra, is like heart-shaped, like a lover's heart, not anatomical heart. And uh, the vertebrae, which are um, in the middle of the series, usually they have their body a little bit flattened from the left side because um, the body is so closely related to the descending thoracic aorta. The uh, canal here is rounded and um, the uh, spine of the vertebra is usually tapered and slanted downwards in most of the thoracic vertebrae, not all of them. However, the characteristic feature of the thoracic vertebra is the presence of costal facets. So here in the typical thoracic vertebra, we usually find costal facets on the body and the transverse process. So the, uh, here we have two costal facets. In fact, they are not complete facets. They are half facets, so they are called demi-facets. So there is a facet above for articulation with a, a, uh, the head of its uh, numerically corresponding rib, and there is a half facet below for the articulation with the head of the rib that is um, next in the series. And then there is a facet on the transverse process, and this is for the articulation with the facet on the tubercle of the rib and not on the head of the rib, costo transverse joint. Usually they articulate with the um, rib, which is numerically corresponding in the series. So of all the features of a thoracic vertebra, the most important characteristic feature is the presence of costal facets. And each thoracic vertebra should contain a costal facet on the body of the vertebra, but it does not necessarily contain a costal facet on the transverse process. Some of the thoracic vertebrae are atypical, and this is the first thoracic vertebra. It is atypical in that the body has one facet above and half facet below. The one facet above articulates with the um, head of the first rib, um, the head of the first rib has only a single facet, and the uh, half facet below articulates with the um, upper facet on the head of the rib, of the second rib, the rib that is next in the series. Uh, it is also atypical uh, here in that its um, um, spinous process here is um, almost horizontal, it is not slanted, but it is tapered but it is not slanted downwards like in other thoracic vertebrae. Sometimes T10 is considered as a typical thoracic vertebra because it contains only a single facet for the head of the rib on its body. There are uh, uh, no two de demi uh, facets, but it also contains a facet on the transverse process. Now, both T11 and T12 thoracic vertebrae are atypical. Atypical because they have only a single facet on the body of the vertebra to articulate with the head of the 11th rib or the 12th rib. And they are atypical uh, because their transverse processes, they do not have costal facets. Because the 11th rib and 12th rib does not have tubercle at all, so it does not articulate with the transverse process. So this is what is atypical about the 11th and 12th thoracic vertebrae. We can also differentiate between the 11th thoracic vertebra and the 12th thoracic vertebra by looking at the superior and inferior articular facets. Now let's deal with the 11th thoracic vertebra. These are the, this is the superior, these are the superior articular facets and these are the inferior articular facets. Note uh, that in each of these uh, uh, articular facets, they have a flat surface here, smooth surface, for the articulation with the, either the vertebra above or the vertebra below. If you look at the um, articular surfaces here, um, you will find that uh, they constitute, or they actually they lie, uh, as if they lie on the perimeter of a circle like this. The circle 
that whose center of the circle is located at the center of the body of the vertebra. So imagine that there is a circle here drawn, and so these articular surfaces, they uh, lie, they are slanted in such a way that they lie on the perimeter of a circle whose center is located anteriorly. And this is the characteristic situation in the thoracic region. So all the thoracic vertebrae, uh, they have, as you can see, for example, this is the typical thoracic vertebra, one of the typical thoracic vertebrae, and you can see that the, uh, these um, articular surfaces, they lie uh, on the perimeter of a circle whose center is located anteriorly. This is the same situation in the 12 uh, thoracic vertebra. Look here, this is the 12 thoracic vertebra, and you can see that the superior articular surfaces, they lie on the perimeter of a circle whose center is located anteriorly because these articular processes are going to articulate with the inferior articulating uh, processes of uh, T11 vertebra, thoracic vertebra. However, the inferior articular processes of T12, they are going to articulate with a lumbar vertebra, first lumbar vertebra. Okay, so if we look at them as such, we will see that they lie on the perimeter of a circle, another circle, whose center is located posteriorly and not anteriorly. And this is a characteristic feature of lumbar vertebrae. So these articular surfaces, inferior articular surfaces, we can say that they are lumbar in type, but the superior articular surfaces, they are uh, thoracic in type because they lie on the perimeter of the circle whose center located um, anteriorly. That, by this way, we can differentiate the um, 12th verte uh, thoracic vertebra from the 11th thoracic vertebra. This is the 12th and this is the 11th. In the 11th thoracic vertebra, both uh, articular surfaces, the superior and the inferior articular surfaces, um, they lie on um, the perimeter of a circle whose center is located anteriorly, while this is not as the situation in the 12th thoracic vertebra.